Hello and welcome everybody to the STEM education. Today, we are going to start with physics for year 10. My name is Sayyad Wahaj. And I'm going to take 10th year of IGCSE physics. This is what we are going to do today. And we are going to start with the first chapter that we have to deal with. And name of the chapter is turning effect of forces. That's something we are going to deal with today. So let's get started with the subject. Let's get started with the topic that we are having at hand today. Now, the first thing that we have to understand is forces. Forces. The question is, what is a force? What is a force? So that is the question that comes to our mind when we start with this chapter. So what is force? Let's have, let's recapitulate a little bit. Whenever we push or pull something, what happens with that particular body? For example, for example, we have, this is a ground, this is a ground. And on this ground, we have a block. So this is a block. It has a mass M. And what we are trying to do, we are trying to push it with a force F. What will happen? When we push a block with a force F, it will start moving. It will start moving like this. Okay. So what does force do? So forces, forces, can cause change in motion. So if we are going to apply force on a body, that force is going to change the state of its motion. If something is just standing still at a place and we are going to push it, it will start moving in the direction of force. If we are going to push it in this direction, it will move rightwards. And if we are going to push it leftwards it will move leftwards so the force has a tendency to change the state of motion of a body so that's one thing another thing it can change the shape of a body it can change the shape of a body the shape of a body so a force has basically two effects it can either change the state of motion of a body or it can change the shape of a body. Next, we are trying to find out how do we measure force? How do we measure forces? So whenever we measure something, whenever we measure a force, we measure it in a unit called Newton. Newton, right? Newton is the unit of force. What is a unit? Unit is something in which we measure a physical quantity. Like if somebody is asking you what is your age, you are going to tell him that I am 16 years old. 16 years old. Okay. So what is this? This is time. We are talking about time. Time is the physical quantity that we are measuring here. Years is the unit in which we are measuring the time. If I'm going to throw a block, to throw a stone, it'll, going, it'll be hitting the ground after some time. And when it's going to hit the ground, it takes some time. We are going to measure it in seconds. If we are going to make this fall on the ground, I have this pen. I just leave it like that. It's going to hit the ground. So the time it takes to hit the ground, we measure it in seconds. So second is also a unit of time. Similarly, the unit of unit of force, unit of unit of force is Newton. Newton. And what does force do? Force either changes the state of motion of a body or it changes the shape of a body. 
Now, what are the different types of forces? Types of forces. Types of forces. Okay. How many types of forces are there? So, on the basis of net effect of force, we have two types of forces. On the basis of effect of force, what is the effect? What actually is happening due to that force? So, let us say that on the basis of effect of forces, on the basis of, on the basis of effect of forces, effect of forces, on the basis of effect of forces, we have two types of forces, balanced, balanced, and unbalanced forces, unbalanced forces. So we have two types of forces, one force is a balanced force, another is unbalanced force. Now what does it mean by balanced and unbalanced force? Let me give you an example and then you'll be able to understand it. Let me give you an example. This is the ground. This is a block. These are two ropes attached to this block. One is pulling it towards right with 10 Newton force. What is Newton? Again, Newton is the unit in which we measure force. So 10 Newton force is being applied rightwards and 10 Newton force is being applied leftwards. So two forces are acting on this block, two forces. One of the force, F1, it tries to make it move rightwards. And then there is the force F2. This force tries to move it leftwards. So both these forces are equal and opposite. What will happen? What will be the net effect of the, these two forces? They are going to cancel each other. The net resultant of these two forces would be zero. Somebody is asking this block to come rightwards with 10 Newton force and leftwards with 10 Newton force. Both are equal and opposite to each other. Add it up and we get a net force equals zero. So this type of force is called balanced force. This type of force is called a balanced force. So what is a balanced force? A balanced force is the net force whose value is zero. So F net, F net equals zero. So when all the forces which are acting on a body, they cancel each other, the net resultant of all the forces, when we add it up, it makes zero, zero Newton. Then we say that the force is balanced. And what is going to be the effect of such force? This force, this force may result in change of shape. Okay? So let's take a lemon, push it from both sides, squeeze, squeeze a lemon. So we are applying force from all the sides on the lemon, but all the forces from all the sides, if this is a yellow lemon, we have a yellow lemon over here, and we are trying to squeeze this lemon from all the sides. We are pushing it from here, from here, from here, from here. We are trying to squeeze this lemon from all the sides. The net force on this lemon is zero. So all the forces which are acting on the lemon, they just cancel each other. But when we squeeze the lemon, what will happen to that lemon? All the juices which are inside the lemon, they just ooze out of the lemon. And in totality, the lemon remains at the place where it was earlier. It was in our hand, it remains in our hand. It doesn't go anywhere. But the shape of the lemon would change. Now you would have a squeezed lemon. Early you would have a lemon, the shape of it would be like round. And once you are done with the squeezing of the lemon, finally you are not going to get a lemon which is round shape. This shape changes. So what does a balance force do? A balance force may or may not, depending upon the type of material we are dealing with. Maybe we are dealing with a rubber ball. We are dealing with a ping pong. We are dealing with a crazy ball. 
we are dealing with the football. So if we are going to push football from both the sides and then we are going to leave it, it's going to regain its shape again. So it is going to be able, the force, the balance force that we are applying from outside is going to change the shape of the football, but the football would remain at its place. So we take a football in our hand and we push it from both the sides. What will happen? The shape of football would change. The shape would change, but still the football would remain where it was earlier. So that is all about balance force. A balance force does not make a body go from one place to another. It does not really change the state of motion. So we can write another thing about it. Is a balanced force, a balanced force, a balanced force that does not, does not, change the state of motion, the state of motion of a body, motion of a body, right? So what do you mean by change in the state of motion? It does not increase the speed, the speed does not change. Direction of motion does not change. Direction of motion does not change. So that's all about the idea of balanced force. We can express it in such a manner that let's say this is the point where forces are acting, a force is acting this way we call it F1, then we call it F2, and then we call it F3. So we have three forces, all the forces have different directions. They cancel each other, and F net equals F1 plus F2 plus F3. This is the net force which is acting at this point if it becomes equal to zero. If the value of all of it is zero. So we say that F net equals zero. And that's the balance force. Good. Now we understand that. So the second type of force that we are having is unbalanced force. What is an unbalanced force? Let's start with an example, the kind of example that we had started with earlier. So let's take this ground. We have this ground. We keep a block of mass M, the side. We are applying 10 Newton force towards the right, and again, we are applying five Newton force towards the left. So these are the two forces which are being experienced by the mass M. How many forces are acting on this one? Let's say, let's assume that there's no gravity in this situation. We are actually operating in a space station or somewhere where there is no gravity. So that's why we have not taken as a gravity pulling it downwards or normal reaction that it might as well be facing when it is in contact with the ground. That's something that we are neglecting. It's a zero gravity space. So it's not being pulled downwards. So what we are having over here, we are having a block. The mass of the block is M. And this block is being pulled rightward by a green arrow force of 10 newtons. And also, it is being pushed leftwards by a 5 newton force. So what would happen with this? What would happen? There would be a net force acting on this block, and the net force would that be of 5 newton. 5 newton. Why is 5 newton? If it is 10, it is 5. We just cancel 5 from 10, we'll get 5 newton. Okay? Let's change it a little bit. For the sake of argument, let's take it as 12 new, right? So how much F net would be? F net is going to be 12 newton minus 5 newton, and that makes it 7 newton, 7 newton force. A total of 7 newton force 
is going to be experienced by the mass m. Good. Now this seven newton force, what it's going to do with the block m? It's not a balanced force. There's a net force. The net force is not zero. So this is going to change the state of its motion. It's going to get accelerated, right? So an unbalanced force, an unbalanced force, unbalanced force would cause acceleration, acceleration in the body, in the body, right? So an unbalanced force would cause an acceleration in the body. That means the body would start moving. Its speed would change. Its velocity would change. Let's write it down, the consequence. Let's write it down. Let's write the consequence of what's going to happen now. The consequence is the, the speed, the speed or direction of motion, of motion would change. That's something which is going to happen. Okay. So let's let's see once again. So we started with the idea of force. Okay. We started off with the idea of force. And we started with the idea that the force is either going to change the state of motion of a body or it's going to change the shape of a body. Now, after that, we studied how do we measure force? What are the different, uh, what, what, what is the unit in which we measure force? Actually, we have different units of force. Newton is a SI unit of force, and then also there is a dyne, dyne, D-Y-N-E, dyne. It is FPS unit of force, dyne, okay? It's a British system. It's a SI unit, SI, international system of units. Okay? So, like we have different units of time. We have seconds, year, day, hour, minutes. So, these are different units of time. Similarly, we can have different units of force. Like we can have Newton as SI unit of force and Dyne as FPS unit of force. What is the unit of force for the length? Uh, Length, when we are going to measure the height of a body, we can measure it in meters, we can measure it in centimeters, we can measure it in foot, yards, and there are different units of uh, distance. Meter is the SI unit of length, and foot is the FPS, British unit of force. Okay, so we understand this. Now, we measure force in Newton. How many Newtons of forces are there? So that was something that we studied. After that, we went onwards and said that the forces are two types based on the effect of force, what that force is actually going to do. If that force is actually going to change only the shape of a body, if a body is experiencing force from all the directions, but the net force, which is being experienced by the force, is zero. If all the forces like this body, it is experiencing two forces, 10 Newton force to the left and 10 Newton force to the right. We add it up and we get a zero Newton force, the total. So that is known as a balanced force and a balanced force will only change the shape of our body. If there's a balanced force, it's only going to change the shape. Again, we have an unbalanced force, an unbalanced force like this pink box, this pink box is experiencing two forces. One of the forces, green one, it has 12 units and 12 newtons basically. And uh, the yellow force is five units, five newton of force towards the left. So these two forces will add up 12 newton towards there and five newton towards here. It makes seven newton as a whole. So the net force would that be of seven newton. So the net force is not zero and this force is going to make the body accelerate. It's going to increase either its speed or either it's going to change the direction of it. So these are two things. I think you can give it a pause and write it down. Write down this thing. Okay.
you just write it down the types of forces one is the balanced force another is the unbalanced force okay so write it down types of bodies okay now what kind of body we are dealing with so there are two types of bodies one type of body is a rigid body is a rigid body rigid body and another one is a flexible body flexible body okay so do we have an example of a rigid body let's talk about a flexible body first and uh, we can have rubber we can have uh, an elastic we can have a scale we can have a scale and we can have a wire soil clay these types of bodies are flexible bodies a flexible body is a body which easily changes its shape so if we have a body which is a flexible body it can easily change its shape right it can easily change its shape a flexible body can easily change its shape like clay what is the example of that? example clay rubber band rubber band a wire these types of bodies are flexible bodies and let's take example of some rigid bodies rigid bodies are like wood a wood like a, a, a block of wood a block of wood and uh, a stone so if we take a stone in our hand and we try to squeeze it are we going to change the shape of the stone until and unless it breaks down if it just shatters we can use a hammer and uh, make pieces of it so if we are having a stone if we are going to have a stone and we can uh, we can throw it on the ground we can smash it we will not be able to we will not be able to change the shape of a stone so a stone is a rigid body and if we are going to talk about rubber band this rubber band is a flexible body it can easily change the shape of it so what would happen what would happen if we take a rubber band we take a rubber band this is a rubber band a rubber band and we put our two fingers like one finger is like this and another finger is like this and we pull it both the sides it will get elongated it will get elongated its shape would change and let's say we are applying 10 newton force and again we are applying 10 newton force how much force is being experienced by the rubber band we are using 10 newton to bring it towards the left towards the right and 10 newton towards the left add it up it's a balanced force and this balanced force is not going to change the place where rubber band was it's just going to elongate it at the same location where it was earlier right so that's a balanced force on a rubber band but if we are going to take a wood if we are going to take a block of wood a block of wood this is a block of wood and we are like pressing it from both the sides we are pressing it from both the sides we are pressing with 5 newton from this side and 5 newton from this side what would happen nothing would happen it wouldn't really change at all the 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 shape of wood 
would also remain the same. It's not going to break down, it's going to resist the change in its shape and a balanced force wouldn't cause any problem with that block. Got it? Okay. Now, what would happen if the same block, the same block of wood is being pulled with 10 Newton to this side and 2 Newton from this side. The total force is going to be 8 Newtons. It's going to be 8 Newtons. The total one is going to be 8 Newtons. Why do we have 8 Newton? 10 Newton, somebody is asking this block to come to its right. Somebody is asking it to come to its left. This is going to oppose it. 10 Newton, we subtract 2 from 10. We are going to get 8 Newtons. And this 8 Newton is an unbalanced force. Is an unbalanced force. Okay. So since this is an unbalanced force, what it does? It would change the motion. It would make this force, this unbalanced force, would make the block move. Right? It would make the block move. Right? So when this block is going to move, it is going to change the speed. Of course, it was stationary, it was not moving, it was kept at a place. And then all of a sudden, we started applying two forces on it. One is of the 10 Newton, another is the 2 Newton. The left force is going to be the 8 Newton, and it's going to be the final force, which is being experienced by this block. And this 8 Newton force is going to make the block move. That's what's going to happen. And then let's say, let's say, this block has a mass of 4 kgs. It has a mass of 4 kg. So a 4 kg block is being pulled towards right with 8 Newton force. What would happen? The block would start moving. Its speed starts increasing. It would start accelerating. Okay? So its speed would start accelerating. And the formula for acceleration is acceleration is equal to force over mass. So what is the force on the block? What is the net force being experienced by the block? It's 8 Newton. And what is the mass of this block? It's 4 kgs. So that would make 2 Newton per kg, which is equal to 2 meters per second squared. That is going to be the acceleration of this block. Okay. So this is basically Newton's second law. We call it Newton's second law. So what Newton said that whenever a block of mass M is being pushed by a force of F Newton, it is going to accelerate, its speed is going to change, its velocity is going to change, it is going to change its direction of motion or its speed. So he said that the force, net force experienced by a block of mass M would be equal to force equals mass into acceleration. Acceleration. And what is acceleration? It is rate of change of velocity. It is rate of change of velocity. Okay. I think all of you are getting my point. I think all of you are understanding. Is there any problem to any one of you? I think a lot. Uh, I think some students have joined the class and. Uh, Talha, I think Talha is there. So Talha, would you please let me know that everything is clear to you? Yes, great. Thank you so much. So Talha, what we are going to do? We are trying to understand what happens with this block. Okay. The same example that we're taking earlier. This is a block. This is, this is a ground. And on this ground, we have a block. This block has a mass of 4 kg and this is being pushed rightwards, rightwards with a force of 8 Newton and uh, it is going to accelerate, its speed is going to increase, it starts moving in this direction with 2 meter per second squared worth of acceleration. So what would happen? If it would even move at time t equals 0 when initially, when the time of uh, 
when the time was zero second, the velocity, the velocity was zero. Then at one second, its velocity would become two meters per second. What what it means? It means the block has started to move. Earlier it was stationary, earlier it was not moving at all. When initially the block was stationary, when we started applying force of 8 Newton, it started moving with an acceleration of 2 meters per second. It means in each and every second, the velocity is going to increase by 2 meters per second. What is going to be its speed after 2 seconds? After 2 seconds, from 2, it becomes 4 meters per second. Its speed would increase. Just think about it. If something is there and we keep pushing it, we keep pushing it again and again with a lot of force, we keep pushing it, its speed would keep on increasing. So it would keep gaining the speed. And how much speed it's gaining? It's gaining two meters per second in every second. Okay? So at zero second, the speed was zero. After one second, the speed was two meters per second. After two seconds, the speed was four meters per second. What its speed is going to be at three seconds. Can you tell me what is its speed going to be at three seconds? Please let me know. Tell me what was the speed at three seconds? Can you tell me? From zero to one second in one second? Uh, yes, it's going to be six meters per second. Then at four seconds, what is the speed going to be? Eight meters per second. So in every second its speed is going to increase by two meters per second. That's what it's that's what's going to happen with it. So the force is causing this body to accelerate, okay? That is something that we have understood. Now the third thing that we have to understand over here, that what if the net force on a body is zero? What if we are using a balanced force, but we are applying that balanced force on an extended, rigid body okay now we are going to investigate effect of effect of unbalanced force unbalanced force on an extended on an extended rigid body effect of an unbalanced force on extended rigid body. What does it mean? What does it mean extended rigid body? So let's take an ant. An ant is a very small creature. It is a very small thing. So if we are going to apply force on it, we can take it as a point. But if we are going to take a log of wood, if it's a big body, extended body basically means a big body. Extended body, Extended body, it just means a large body, a large body. And rigid body means, and rigid body means a non-flexible body, non-flexible body like a rock. It's not Dwayne Johnson, okay? It's not the rock, it's a rock. <laughs> so that's what we have to understand. So the rock, like Dwayne Johnson, is not a non-flexible body. We can we can throw some punches and he might get disfigured. So he's not really a rigid body. But yes, we have a rock. Yeah. So what would happen if an extended body is going to experience an extended rigid body. An extended, extended rigid body. That means a large non-flexible body, like a large rock or a log of wood. What would happen when we apply, we apply, a balanced force, a balanced force on what if, what if, what if we apply a balanced force on 
an extended rigid body. What will happen? Let's assume. So let's say this is a rectangular block. This is a rectangular block. And what kind of block it is? It is an extended rigid body. What does it mean by extended? Extended means its shape is not going to change. If, even if we are going to apply force on it, it's extended, extended rigid body. What will happen if on this extended body we are going to apply a balanced, a balanced force? Okay. So let's say we applied 10 Newton here, 10 Newton here, and 10 Newton here, right? So these both forces are acting along a straight line. So what is here? This is the case where both the forces, both the forces are collinear. Okay, both the forces which are being experienced by this block, they are along the same line. Okay. So what would happen, what would happen with this block when these two forces are being applied on it? Tell me, tell me, can you tell me what can happen to this block if these two, two forces, 10 Newton from here, 10 Newton from here, both the forces are equal and opposite and both of them are acting along the same line. That's why we call it collinear forces. We call it collinear forces. Why do we call it collinear forces? Because they are acting along a straight line. So somebody is pushing it towards right, somebody is pushing it towards left, both the forces are 10 Newton, they are acting on the same line, that's why we call it a collinear force. So please tell me what would happen with this block when these two forces are being applied on it. Tell me. Tell me, I'm waiting for your answer, man. Okay. Tell me, what would happen? These two forces, 10 Newton, 10 Newton, both are equal and opposite to each other and they are acting along the same line. What would happen? Anything is going to happen? Tell me. Is anything going to happen that, to that block? Yes, exactly. Exactly, it would remain at its place. It wouldn't go anywhere. Nothing would happen with this block. Why? Okay, if, if it was made of rubber, if it was made up of rubber, it was not a rigid body, what would have happened? What would have happened to this block if this block was made up of a rubber, made up of a cloth? Okay, what would have happened? Or made up of cotton? Tell me, tell me what would have happened with, with this uh, body if it would have been a flexible body, it would, if it would have not been a rigid body and these two forces, what effect would they be having on this block? If it was not rigid, if it was not rigid, it was extended, it was a big block, but it was not rigid. Then these two 10 Newton forces, which are equal and opposite to each other, what they would have done to this? Yes, it would have been in the same position. Very good. But would the force squeeze the body? Would these two forces squeeze it? Yes, they would have squeezed it. Right. So, but here, they, they, it's not going to get squeezed because it is made up of it is a rigid body. We cannot squeeze it. It's a rigid body and it's an extended body. Now let's take another example, the same one, the same one. Let's take the rigid body here. It's, it's like this. And uh, we are going to apply 10 Newton at this end, 10 Newton at this end, and 10 Newton at this end, right? But in this case, in this particular case, we can see that these two forces are not in the same line. These two forces are not in the same line. They're displaced. They are not collinear forces. These two forces are not collinear. 
we have this 10 newton force here and this 10 newton forces the direction of both these forces are opposite to each other this is opposite to each other but they are non collinear they are not in the same line okay one of them is above and the other one is below it it's not along the same line what would have happened what would happen to this rigid block this rigid block is experiencing two forces and these two forces are not in the same line but they are opposite to each other and they have the same value the direction is opposite to each other what what would happen tell me i'm listening and i'm trying to get the answer from you i'm trying to get that answer from you it would move yes but would it get displaced yes it is going to move you are very intelligent it's going to move but is it going to get displaced it is is it going to go from its initial position to another position no it's not going to no it's not going to other position what would happen let me tell you what would happen here is that we have this block we have this block we can just copy and paste over here what would happen with it it would rotate like this right there would be a point there would be a point on this body and the whole body is going to make circular motions the whole body is going to make circular motions like this don't you agree with me don't you agree with me that all the body is going to make circular motion on it like this right do you agree with me do you agree with me that both of these are going to make circular motions yes it's going to rotate like this it, this this block this block is going to rotate right this block is going to rotate yes it's going to rotate like this am i right so this block is going to go anti clockwise ta la 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 ta la 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 like it's going to move like this okay so the upper portion this portion of it's going to be moving in this direction it's going to be moving in this direction it's going to be moving here it's going to be moving here and then there would be one point on this entire body this point on the entire body which would not be moving at all like you see fan if you see fan rotating on the ceiling of your room you would see that there's a point on that fan which is not moving at all all the points on that fan are going round and round and round the farther the point is from the center it's going to make a bigger circle the point which is nearer to the center it's going to make a smaller circle as you come towards the center of the fan the speed of that point on the fan decreases okay so this one this point let's make different points on that body let's call this point a this point b and this point c okay so point a would be moving point b would be moving point c would be moving which one of these points va is the speed of point a vb is the speed of point b and vc is the point speed of point c please tell me what would be the speed of point c what would be the speed of point c tell me what do you think the point of c would be moving with which is what speed point c would be moving with can you tell me can you tell me what would be the speed of point c please let me know zero and from a and b which one would be moving with greater velocity which one would be moving with larger velocity the speed of a would be more or the speed of b would be more the speed of a would be more very good so the point a would be moving with larger velocity and the point b would be moving with a smaller velocity and what this balance is in this a balance force force is this net force is zero yes f net is going to be zero f net the net force is going to be zero because these two forces this 10 newton force and this 10 newton force both of these forces are acting opposite to each other the direction is opposite but since they are not collinear they are not acting in the same line they cause rotation of the rigid body okay they cause and when two collinearly and they are opposite to each other then they cause turning of 
the body. They ro- they make the block rotate. They go even they make it go round and round and round about the specific center. So if somebody is going to ask you this question, what is what is the rotating or the turning effect or the turning effect of forces hmm? so the answer to the question is when all the forces all the forces have have an effect have an effect that causes that causes a rigid body to rotate body to rotate okay so if all the forces have net effect on a rigid body that the body starts rotating when a rigid body starts rotating under the influence of all the forces under influence of all the forces then we say that it is the turning effect of forces when forces make a body rotate this is called turning effect of force so do you think this rotating body or the fan on the ceiling fan on the ceiling that's hanging from the ceiling of your room is it going from place a to place b is it moving is it changing its position it's changing its location do you think that the ceiling fan in your room is changing its location tell me yes or no tell me is the ceiling fan of your room changing its location yes or no tell me tell me what do you think about it no it's not changing its location but is it moving is it moving yes it is moving but it's not changing its location so what is happening that the force which ceiling fan is experiencing is causing the fan to turn to rotate but the net force on the fan is zero that is why it's not changing its location it's accelerated okay so that is what we have today and uh, this was the introduction to the rotating effect to the turning effect of uh, the turning effect of forces we studied and we dealt with we had the initial idea of what forces are so in this class we discussed two things the first thing that we discussed was what is force what is force that was the first thing that we discussed the second thing that we discussed was the unit of force unit of force and what was the unit of force newton third thing was balance and imbalance force balance and unbalanced force unbalanced force unbalanced force fourth thing is rigid and non rigid bodies rigid and non rigid bodies okay so rigid and non rigid bodies after that we discussed the turning effect of turning effect of balanced So these are few topics that we discussed today. Those are the topics we class. From the next class, we'll develop further upon the idea of the turning effect of forces and how they really affect. It's a very big and very beautiful topic. And uh, from the part of mechanics, it's a very interesting one, and it has a lot of applications in our day-to-day lives. 
So we get to understand a lot about physics. It's fun, it's great. It's really a great learning experience when you start studying physics by understanding it the way you should be. And all the questions which are going to be asked from this topic are going to be easy. And uh, I hope you really enjoy the physics with us. So this was STEM uh, education for you. And uh, goodbye for today. Let's start the class in the next session. Okay. So these are the final summary of the class. This is the final summary. It is the summary. It is the summary of today's class. Today's class. In the next class, you will be provided with questions and answers in the video those things will be provided to you accordingly and uh, we'll have we'll continue with the next topic with, with the next uh, uh, succession of the topics from the next class so thank you so much and uh, i think we should now call off today's class thank you so much